Hello. Well, good evening. And this is Wednesday, of course. Or we started Sunday. So we got Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. This is day four of our lives. And I am Vicki Jean with Vicki Jean Wilson Art, and where I teach you simple sketching and painting techniques. And so we are on, like I said, day four of the live. Tonight, you're going to learn all about these little dies. I'm going to give you some information about them. If you have never painted with palette knives before, you might want to stick around and uh, kind of see how it works. It's a fun little uh, uh, tool to use. There is all kinds of different sizes. And I'm going to pull out a few of them. I'm just a couple minutes early, so I wanted to just start. And uh, when you jump on here, please say hello. We'll make sure that the comments are working. And I see Doris and Bonnie. Thank you guys for coming. Um, so we'll try to get it all situated here. But look at this one here, guys. It's a, it looks like a, uh, uh, what you would put icing on a cake, right? But it's a palette knife. And uh, there is all shapes, like I said. Look at the circular one. Kind of oval, actually. Then you have this one here that definitely looks like, uh, definitely looks like a cake. Uh, to put icing on a cake. This is one of my favorite ones. You can see how um, dirty it is. I also use this guy uh, to paint and also to clean up my board here, my palette, Let's see, and also my table sometimes. This one is a workhorse. You can do all kinds of things with this too. Now you have also different shapes, like this one. And uh, there's also uh, small ones, large ones. The ones I'm going to use tonight, let me show you here. This is another one of my favorites. As you can see, it's kind of got a oval shape here. The handle is, is uh, very uh, good to uh, use. you got a nice grip with it. And if you notice, some of the uh, palette knives... The ones that I prefer are the ones that come up and you're not scraping your knuckles or your fingers across your canvas when you're when you're working. So uh, we talk a lot about this in my membership. Uh, we have a uh, training on it actually. But I want to show you the variety of what palette knives come in if you have never experienced painting with them. Now they also come in plastic. This little guy here I have used, eh, like my brushes, <laughs> I've used them a lot. And you just kind of pick out your favorite ones and you just use them and use them and use them, right? I do anyway. Uh, I love to get new art supplies and new tools, but I always come back sometimes to my favorites. This is one of them. But this is close, so it's not quite as wide across the bottom here. So we probably will use both of these tonight. I also want to show you, if you're just new to this and you're starting out and you would like to try some palette knives, you can get these plastic ones in a package. I think there's like six maybe of these different shapes in a package that you can buy, very economical. And they're good, as you can see, this one, I have worked this to death and it's still in rope on me. So you can get these or you can get the metal ones. Uh, but tonight, let me put these back here. Tonight I'm going to show you uh, the one that I'm going to probably use the most is this one right here. See? Um, so I'm glad you jumped on. I'm glad to have you guys here tonight. And the thing with uh, palette knives and palette painting, uh, you can use the thin paint that comes in these jars. These are just a thinner paint, right? Uh, they're more liquefied than if you have them in a tube, right? We talked a little bit about this last night. Uh, the tube paints compared to these uh, craft type paints, uh, they're both, uh, these are Master's Touch from Hobby Lobby. This one is a deco art and uh, they're both okay paints. You know, that's, I wouldn't use these for my finer art, 
but I use them a lot for teaching and uh, training and just experimenting with. But they're both, uh, this one here is thin. And I'm going to show you a little bit what the difference is. When you work with a palette knife, you need to have uh, more of a uh, thicker paint. Uh, and like this one here is your yellow ochre in a tube. And it is thicker than your bottle, your little bottle. But looky here. Now this is a Master's Touch brand. It's the same color as this here. It's a yellow ochre. And it is very thick. It's a thick body acrylic paint and that works well for palette knife painting. So I am going to put some of this. I'm going to go ahead and change our, um, our focus here and let you see. I'm going to put some of this on my palette and that is a yellow ochre. It is the thick body paint. I also have it in a red light but it's it's more of a uh, orange tint to it. I'll put that on there. We have been painting. Uh, we've painted a turquoise, kind of a light blue or turquoise type uh, canvas. Mm -hmm. Last night, let me show you what we had, what we did. We learned how to paint a fall scene or kind of a fall barn. A lot of the same colors since it's you know fall we're decorating for fall we're beginning to if you haven't already started and uh, now's the time to get our brushes and paints and things out and start working on our home decor or some gifts now before I forget it though I do want to tell you tomorrow night we're gonna do this this is a wooden tag they're just fun to do. You can put ribbon through here, string through here. I'm going to use uh, probably a black and white checked ribbon. Tomorrow night I'm going to paint this and it's going to be a gnome. It's going to be a fall gnome. So it's going to be kind of tall. He's not going to go all the way to the top, but he's going to be, you know, good substantial size. And I hope you can join me tomorrow night because we're going to learn how to paint a little gnome. And they're just kind of a fun, whimsical type thing. I'm surprised the gnomes are still so popular. They've been around for a few years, actually, uh, as far as home decor. and uh, But they are. They're still very popular. So we're going to paint one tomorrow night. So let me change the camera. We'll look at the overhead here. Okay. Now I have here like a 6x6 six six canvas. I think this is a 6x6. Six six. Let's check it out here real quick. Yes. 6x6 six six canvas and um, I wanted to do a lighter background with uh, the color scheme is going to be more of the orange and the yellow ochre color in here. So the lighter background will cause this to just pop, right? So when you are working with your uh, your paints, your canvases, whatever you're going to paint on you and you have to think about how that's going to look, how your colors are going to coordinate together, and um, what makes it pop and what doesn't, you know. In this case, this lighter background back here uh, is going to make the orange tones pop. Now another color, I could have done black, you know, black background, and oh my goodness with the orange, you know, that's going to definitely make a difference. So um, before I start painting, I want to make sure I see Hi Sherry, hi Leanne, yeah Janice, uh, the palette knife painting is, it's different and you know I didn't start that, hi Susan, I did not try that until later, I've always been, you know, a paintbrush person and I still am, but it's fun to pull out the palette knives once in a while and I do both, you know, I do a mixture, when I did this background right here, that's done, uh, so far that's done with a brush. So I went ahead and I scat, sketched my pumpkin. You can see it. I believe it shows up a little bit for you. And um, then I'm going, I've got the background on here. I've done the sides also. So it's kind of a, uh, I did this with just a brush. I got into the grays and just kind of went back and forth, kind of cross hatching like a, we have been doing. See how this is right here? This is the canvas part, and sometimes when you get into canvases, you're going to have a little bit more, uh, they're not perfect, you know, they're not perfect. So you're going to have some of that uh, color come through, 
And I, I like that, though, with this rustic. I love it when it kind of skips and stuff. It gives it some character. So right now, we're going to start our pumpkins. Our pumpkin right now. We'll see how long this takes. I have two canvases ready, but we'll just see how this does. Tomorrow night will be a little bit longer. Last night, we, we ran a little bit longer, which is, is fine. But I uh, kind of want to uh, shorten it a little bit tonight for you guys. Well, I am dipping my brush and it's a new brush guys aren't you proud of me I don't you know we talked about this last night you get used to certain tools oh my goodness I uh, just kind of want to use the same tools I'm going to darken this a tad this orange is pretty bright well it's it's called red light but it was actually the only thick paint I had now another way that you can uh, that was on hand Another way you can use your paints with a palette knife is you can either buy, like I said, the thick acrylic, uh, thick body uh, acrylic paint in different brands, or you can also add a gel medium to your paint. We're not going to do that tonight, but we do learn that. We, I do teach you how to do that uh, in the group, and uh, it will thicken up your paint as well. So if you can see here, I put a little bit brown, and I'm just, I like the more of the rusty type orange. Okay, I'm kind of mixing me some with my brush. And I'm going to come around and I'm going to get a nice base coat using a brush first. I want to show you the differences here is why I'm doing this. So I'm getting the outside shape. It's a pretty color, isn't it? See how easy it is to mix paint? It really is. I mean, you can get very detailed with it. Very detailed. Color theory is, well, you can get lost in it, but I don't want to go that far. <laughs> I like to enjoy it. I don't want to just want to play and have fun and teach others without going into a lot of in-depth. If you want a lot of in-depth, I do give you in-depth, but if you want just a tremendous amount and you have a lot of experience, then you probably want to look elsewhere for a membership, but I still give wonderful uh, information but like I said it is for beginning and intermediate painters crafters makers whatever you want to call yourself because you know I go to art shows I go to markets I love going to them and uh, a lot of makers there's a lot of sign makers out there and they want to do some art maybe on their signs they want to add a little pumpkin here or there with their wording and they need to they need to learn these techniques they need to learn some things if they haven't had the experience okay that is a pretty pumpkin I think I am going to bring it over I'm going to try to get it uh, a little bit over on the left just so you kind of balance it out you know, we talk about that too, trying to get it centered more. Now, I just sketched this with a pencil earlier to have it ready. Like I said, in the membership, if you are not comfortable with sketching, that's a-okay. Part of the membership comes with templates. Every first of the month, you will receive the template for yours to keep. And... Uh, do whatever you want to with it. You can make things, you can sell things from them, you can whatever you want to do. I do appreciate if you don't do any online classes <laughs> with them. <laughs> but if you want to make some money going to shows and painting your things with that template, you are more than welcome to. Okay, I've got the first layer, as you can see, and I used the half-inch paintbrush 
This is a new brush I'm trying out. This is from Deco Art Paint Brushes. I've not tried these before. I sh told you guys about them last night. This is a size 12 flat brush. And um, so we're trying that out too. I love that color. And see, all I did was mix the red light with the Folk Art Real Brown. Uh, remember what I said when we first started? I kind of mix it. I have all kinds of paints. I have a variety of paints. And uh, so, uh, let me, uh, excuse me, just a minute. While that's drying, I need to uh, just do something. Just a second. Hang with me, guys. Get you something to drink. I'll be right here in just a second. Okay, here we go. Let's try this again. I'm sure they had my all my uh, things in a row, but sometimes they all my ducks in a row, you know. But sometimes they fall, they get out of the row. You guys ever do that? You guys ever do that? I do that. Okay, now I can back to our pumpkin here. I can go ahead and go over this paint. But you know what's going to happen. It's just like if you're using your brush, or it's going to pull up and it's not dry. The paint's not dry. It's going to pull up some of that underlying paint. In this case, uh, I don't really mind too much because we're putting thick paint on top of it. And I could let this dry, but I'm going to show you two ways, right? Uh, but it's, it's that fun part of the palette knife that you mix uh, colors you put its layers on top of layers, and the more layers, sometimes it just turns out beautiful, beautiful. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this palette knife right here. Get my, oh gosh, I didn't get my oops rag, guys. Remember I talk about having that. I'm going to dip into my yellow ochre. But this is the thick body paint. See how thick that is? Creamy, buttery. It's perfect, perfect, perfect for palette knife painting. Let me show you the difference in this one. The paint differences are sometimes quite a bit and sometimes are very similar. But this is a good example to show you because it's the same color. So right here is the thick body paint. It's very buttery makes peaks. Let's see. So let me wipe that off. I'm going to show you this other paint. See, it's a little soupy. You can kind of make peaks, but not near as high. It's like if you're making that buttercream icing and all. See, it's pretty soft. That's the difference. It's not that you can't use this one. You sure can. But when you uh, work with a palette knife, it is a lot uh, easier to work with if you have your thicker uh, paint. And like I said, you can buy paint, that full body paint like I have here, or you can get the regular paint. You can get the cheaper paint if you like and uh, add some medium to it. Hi, Cindy. Make sure I say hello to everybody and Susan. So here we go. We've got our base here that I painted on with a brush. And I'm going to start in and I'm going to add a little bit of this to that base color. I'm going to tone it down just a little bit. Now I like the mixture of colors. I like to mix these as you can see. You'll see I'm getting a different shade. And I'm just taking my knife and kind of skimming it like you were putting butter on bread. So I've got a different shade right here altogether. It's different than any of these around. There's no right or wrong in this. You're just plain. I've got some on my palette here, or my palette knife. And as you notice, it's different than a brush, of course. Your brush has your bristles. Your palette knife it's just a knife. The more you have on your knife, the easier it's going to spread. You think about it like you are putting butter or something on toast. 
The more you have on, it's easier to spread. The less, it will kind of skip. It's the same way as this. But I like that look on these because I want to show that base coat of the orange and some highlights. So I'm just kind of following along the way I want that pumpkin to look. I want that center part to stand out a little bit more. And you see the skips in it? That's what I love. And I wish you could feel what I feel with this. <laughs> because the part that I dearly love about painting with palette knives is after you get a few layers of paint on it and they uh, kind of dry and they're kind of, uh, they skim the surface, right? Uh, you'll get to a point. I, I need to I need to come up with a name for it. I don't know if there is even a name. There might be. I don't know. Uh, there's a point where you pull your palette knife across that surface again after a few layers, right? And they just start skimming. It just it just flows. It's just got a flow to it. And you can't experience it unless you're doing it, you know. And it's just a it's. I think it's just kind of cool is all I think. Okay, we've got two shades here, right? Well, actually, we've got more because we've got some thin paint here. But we put our base coat down with our paintbrush. Then the second layer here is with a mixture that we mixed with the uh, burnt umber, I mean yellow ochre, and our thick body paint, the red light. So we made that color right here. So the first was this color. The second layer, see if I can get it without getting, eh, probably not. I need to wipe that off. Sometimes you can pick it up and do it and sometimes you can't. One good thing too that you do with palette knives, just get you a paper towel. That's the best way to clean them. Just take them like that when you want to do that. Easy peasy. You don't have to wash your brush out. Okay. Here is the second color. I don't have as much to show you, but that's basically the second color here that we did on the canvas. This is the first base coat. Here is the second. What I'm going to do now is lighten it up just a little bit more. So I'm going to take some of this heavy body, put it like a little bit right here. Not that some orange mixed in that, just a tad bit. No big deal. No big deal. Let's add just a touch of yellow to this. Now, I didn't have any thick yellow. I didn't have any heavy body. I'm just using a drop to lighten it of a uh, cad yellow, cadmium yellow. Maybe if I can get any out of the jar. This is the golden brand. And I'm just, I just want a little bit. I don't want much. I'm not worried about it being thick. I've already got thick paint there. But I'm just going to mix it. Change the color just a bit. Okay, just kind of mix it back and forth. So here is our third color we're going to use. First, second, and third here. We're adding a little bit more highlight. Now there is so many colors you can use with this. But it's starting to Get that feel of what I'm wanting, of the skip parts. I usually always kind of turn. I do the sides, the outer area first, kind of get my bearings. See how it skips? Now that's the canvas. That's your weave on your canvas. And as it builds up, we're not doing it very thick at all. But if you were doing, like I do florals, some of my florals are, are built up quite a bit. Well, it will start skipping or skimming a lot quicker than right now. 
See, and I'm just laying my brush down, trying to keep the same uh, pattern, shape. Okay, here we go. Okay, the next thing, I'm going to leave uh, that on my brush. I'm going to touch in a little bit of this dark brown. Now this um, is pretty with light colors too. So I want to show right here, I'm taking the edge of my palette knife showing the ribs more. See, top to bottom. So your knife can lay flat to paint with or get it upright more. The little pumpkin's going to be coming together here real soon. But you always constantly kind of have to Turn your canvas around from time to time. Get the right angle. This isn't really a fast process. Come over here and kind of visualize another rib coming down here. Now if I wanted to and I wasn't very uh, certain of myself I could have went ahead and probably sketched that on there after that dried if I uh, didn't feel comfortable just doing it like this I would let the paint dry and then sketch the thing with this type of painting it's not perfect you don't have to be perfect. You don't want to be perfect. You don't want to. You want to, you want to be free with it. <laughs> I'm going to add some of my orange and brown to get a darker color. Because I want to add some shadow here. And I'm just mixing. Let me show you here. Just mix some of this here, and that, and here is another color that we're using. Almost like a cinnamon brown. So the bottom left, I'm just adding some of this darker color. And this is when it starts getting more definition to it. Can you hear it? I don't know if you can hear it or not. But it's starting to get the definition. If you get some out of your point here that you need to, I'm just taking a damp, bra uh, damp uh, brush and I'm moving it along like that. Picking up the paint that kind of went out of the border. You can get a rag if you want to, but you do have to, you do have to, since this isn't very thick, you do have to kind of react pretty fast. This one isn't thick, putting the top layer here on. Okay. And we're getting more of the definition with the darker color, darker brown. I want to do some more down here on this next section of the pumpkin. Sometimes you have to kind of pick up a little bit more than what you first think of the color. Darker a little bit right here. I 
I like that. Just a little blob. I like that. And the more, like I said, the more layers you're going to use, the more kind of uh, the blobs or, or uh, oops or whatever. I don't really want to call them oops because they're not oops to me. They're the texture that comes with the painting. They're the kind of the free spirit in the painting that happens. And as you can see, watch this. I'm going to give you an example. This is we're getting to where it's it's got that uh, that floating feeling. I'm taking my palette knife and I'm just going to pull across some of my paint. See how I have it on here, just like that. I don't have a lot. Just like that. And I'm going to show you how it just skims. Because we've got some layers. We've got the base layer. We've got the uh, yellow ochre layer. We've got some of the uh, brown. I'm going to add a little bit more brown. So let's start. Let's try it this way. I'm going to go up. You see that? See how that just skimmed? Oh gosh. That was greasy. She hears something out there. Always, right? They always do. <laughs> Anybody here have dogs? Yeah, she hears something out there. Okay, see how that skimmed? That's part of the fun. That's part, I think, of the uh, process of this. Now you can add however many colors you want, and now we're just skimming. It's just skimming. If you want it thicker, you add more of the paint to thicken it up. Now you will have to, um, and then if you want to wipe your palette knife off, you do it just like that. I'm going to use some highlighting now. So, um, let me see here. I can mix. What I think I will do is like we did our other pumpkins. I'm going to mix some of uh, the thick body and I'm going to mix it with a little bit of white. So I've got my white here. It's just an apple barrel white student grade paint. But because this is a thick body paint, I'm going to go ahead and add some of the regular thick body paint with it, with the, the thin paint. It'll be fine. It'll work out just fine. So it's coming up with a lighter shade, almost actually a coral type color. It's a pretty color. Mixing it back and forth to so get all the same color. Let's see what this looks like on top for a highlight. Now, like I said, there's no right or wrong. You all, you know, the, the good thing about painting, guys, paint over. There's nothing wrong. If you have a problem with the color palette, if you have a problem, you've made a uh, oops, that you think of, that you think you have, maybe nobody else does, paint over the thing. It's not going to hurt anything. That's one thing that's great about acrylic paint. It's inexpensive. And if you have a problem with your painting when you're done, paint over it. Gesso it, paint over it. Let it dry. Okay, even though I've added some dark, I still want to bring in some light too and let it skim over in places. See how it skimmed right there? I love that part. I have the little polka dot things. Now look how much that's changing our painting here. Several colors, that's what I said. It's part of a it's a layering that we do with the palette knives. 
the flowers are probably one of my favorite things that I truly, truly enjoy pellet knife painting with. Okay. See that? To me, that made a big difference right there. Big difference. Isn't that pretty? Um, I hope your monitor shows it, you know, as like it does here. I'm going to add some more white to this, so I'm even brightening it up, lighten it up a little bit more. There we go. It's almost a peachy. Now, I don't want to put that all over, I don't believe. I want to just add the highlights at the tops of the pumpkin. There we go. I think it might be kind of pretty to add the highlight there. The center is where you want your highlight to go to. Sun's kind of hitting that pumpkin in different places. And you're constantly kind of turning around when you have a small canvas like this, you are. Now, I don't do it, I'm lightly touching this. I mean, I'm, because we're doing this wet on wet. A lot of times you dry. Let these dry, these layers dry, and then you try another one. So I'm trying to do this in a tutorial by showing you how to do it. So I'm not scraping. It might sound like I am in places, but it's really just coming across the paint. And I'm not going very uh, hard at all on this. There we go. And like we've talked before, when you're painting, you have to take a break. You have to, I'm gonna tilt this, see if you can see that. On, uh, it's very pretty colors. Not sure how yours looks, cause my monitor, uh, when I look down at it, it looks different, uh, but it's very pretty. But you can use different colors to do this with the course. You can do different greens, you can do different oranges, but I, I like this mix here. So I'm actually happy with that right now. I might do a little bit more brown down here at the bottom. Just a touch more. And I'm using the same palette knife, you know, just in the same one. So I'm at the stage where I have enough paint on it that I think I'm going to stop. And if I decide to, you know, add some more later, I can. I'm going to let it dry a little bit, though. Here. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do next, we're going to put a... Uh, does anybody have any questions or anything on this? Let me know in the comments if you do. Let's go ahead and do the stem, pull it together here. I'm going to get my uh, half inch brush and dipping it in that brown paint. And like I said, I don't want my stems to be just straight, I want them to have some character to them. I'm pulling it down in that pumpkin sun. Now you could just, if you wanted to, you can uh, just go ahead and let it uh, sit on top, but I like my stems a little bit into the pumpkin. Okay. Okay. 
if I want to clean up my edges, which is usually it happens, just go ahead and get my white and kind of clean that up while that's drying. Especially when you're working with something small. This, like I said, is a six by six canvas. So it's it's hard not to get some things on the outside. Are you guys ready to decorate for fall or have you decorated for fall? Let me know. Let me know if you've already decorated. I just put a wreath on the door. That's all I've got so far. I need to, I have an older wreath and I need to refreshen it up, freshen it up, I guess. Not refreshen, but freshen it. So I haven't had a chance to go get some uh, flowers and things. Okay. Uh, now probably what I will do, we'll see how this dries here. The center part, I want it to come forward a little bit. So I'm going to let this dry while we're working on the stem. And I'm going to add even a lighter color here in this, this oval here in the center. And you know, you might want to rework like over here. I might need to do a little bit more that shows uh, with the edge here that shows the ribs. Over here, you can kind of see the rib. Here you can see here. Right here, it's kind of, it's covered over some. So once this dries a little bit more, then you just add another layer to whatever you're doing. So uh, this is my base coat. I almost always, I almost always do a base coat first with a brush. Um, most people, that now not always, but a lot of people that work with palette knives, they do both. They do the brushes and they do the uh, palette knives, both. They use both. Interchange, interchange each one. Now you can do a, a, a picture completely with palette knife. It is very, uh, very rustic, very rustic, and uh, because you've got all that texture going on. So uh, I've done a beach scene like that before. It was pretty because the waves and. Uh, uh, the sand and things, and you want it. I wanted that texture look. So I'm going to get a little bit of black paint here. Now, on my painting here, I want the texture to be emphasized on the pumpkin. I don't necessarily want it on the stem. I want the focus on that pumpkin. So the stem is kind of in the background. You know, it's, uh, it's not getting the spotlight. And that's okay, I don't want it to. I'm going to dip my half inch brush in the black paint. And I'm just touching up like we kind of did with the other day with the stems. And I'm making the shadow part on the left side. I don't want it just straight up and down. I don't want that. But if you like yours like that, I say go for it. It's fine. Now I'm going to get some of the white. I wash my brush and I'm dipping a little bit in the white. I'm going to go on the opposite side to highlight some. I'm just dabbing, just tapping, dabbing. Dab a little bit of that lighter color on the top. Just kind of tapping. I, I don't want it really smooth. I want it to look uh, rustic and so in the center I'm bringing some brown back down again. And if you can see I'm kind of using the corner of my brush just tapping it around. And there's some other color in there. I don't necessarily want um, anything perfect on this painting. 
Okay, you've got that lip right here of the dark of the black, and see that just gives it like a little hat almost because it's lighter underneath that dark, which makes that pop in the uh, stem. Um, let it dry a little bit more, add some more black here. But I don't want to pull up, because I am painting wet on wet here, so I don't really want to pull up much paint. I don't mind it uh, being somewhat with the texture, but I don't want to paint, I don't want to pull up too much, and right then I did. So we're going to cover that back up here. It gives it a little different kind of look there too. Okay. I like the white. I do like the highlight of the white on the right. I'm just touching, just touching, just tapping. Tapping, tapping. So is anybody decorated? Have you guys decorated? Thank you, Leanne. The the uh, yeah the this is a different technique. It, I mean, it's a different technique if you're just used to uh, painting with brushes, and uh, it's it's fun. And I tell you what, another thing like I don't some of you probably weren't on here yet, but when I showed you some of the larger palette knives that we have here, see here, these are great for especially this one here for a larger canvas for a background like this background here almost gives you the look of being with a palette knife but it isn't it's with a brush now let's play here just a second i've got my clean palette knife and i'm going to go ahead and dip a little bit in that white and i'll show you something here what happens i don't know no, i bet you're not gonna be able to see it might not be able to see it I'm just touching here and there around to give it a little bit of texture. Now, this isn't thick paint there. Let me lift that up and see if you can, can you see some of that white there? See? And it gives you a little bit more texture to it. Um, but this is how you basically paint with a palette knife. Now this is, uh, most of it is dry. I am very gently, very gently going over these colors. And look how that's picking up. It's picking up some of the dried paint and it's just skimming over. This is the part that I absolutely love about palette knife painting. Because you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be perfect. It doesn't. And you don't want it perfect, actually. You want to kind of stay within your subject matter. You know, you want to keep the shape of the pumpkin and all that. But uh, this is a great one to just try to learn to be free. That's something that's hard for a lot of people to uh, do. They, they look at to others for their art. They want to compare themselves to others. And that is a no-no. It is. A, it is. It's, it's easy to do. It is, it is easy to do. Um, but, uh, you know, you can get discouraged too easily if you compare yourself to others. Um, we're all at different stages in life. And um, that's what I like about the membership because that's what it is. You have a variety of people that want to learn. Uh, we're at different stages and we're just, you know, just be patient with each other and uh, respectful and appreciate that they are learning. Now, let's just say, just like right there, right here, that I'm not crazy about that. I think it's fine, but I'm just going to say I'm not crazy about it. I'm going to take my little oops towel, and you have to be careful. You're not going to scrub that. And just, I've got it damp, and I just touch. Just touch up and down on that, and see it removed it. It removed it. Um, and I like it better, actually. I think that's fine. 
Now I have the highlight or the white in the center more, but some here, I need a little bit more on this side to balance that out. So let's see, Susan, you have a, yeah, I know, I, like I said, I just put out, I need to get me some more florals to revamp my wreath, and um, I don't have any, so um, I put out a door hanger that I made several years ago, actually, in a class, or I gave a class, we made painted door hangers, and uh, I put that on the door because I, I don't like a naked door. I don't know about you guys, but I don't like a naked door. Just not right. Thank you, Susan. Um, okay, guys, let me show you maybe a little closer. See how that looks. You've got texture in the background. You've got oodles of texture with your pumpkin. You can do these any colors you could do, like we were doing the, the uh, this would be beautiful if you actually did, let me pull this just a second, if you uh, did this kind of color on one of these and a white uh, light background, oh my gosh, yes, it'd be gorgeous too. You could do your green pumpkins, you know, just the main trick I feel like is make sure that you, um, have at least at least three different colors three shades you know remember when we did the uh, when I started and I showed you the different shades that we were using you know I had that orange kind of the reddish orange right <laughs> that's right don't let your door be naked that's right <laughs> there's nothing worse than a naked door <laughs> Sandra uh, you've got your orange, and then I uh, we added some dark brown too, right? Then we added the uh, one that's like this, your golden yellow or your uh, your yellow ochre. Let's see. Then we mixed the orange with some white, and it kind of has a peachy somewhat look. So see, look how many colors. And then we added uh, the white on the top. So that's what makes the palette knife painting so unique, I feel like. Uh, now, looking at that, this direction, you know, it's different when you're sitting and you're painting, and we've talked about this, when you're painting with your canvas or whatever it is flat versus putting it up on an easel. But for you guys, I lay it flat so you can, of course, see the overhead painting. But when I look at this now, and I stand back and I look, I see I've got the brown here to add some weight to it, a darker color, but I need it over here too. I had it, but it's probably removed. So I'm going to touch that up for a second. Get a little bit more brown on my palette knife. Now I'm not putting much on there at all. Oops. Get my paintbrush in. I'll let you guys know how those paintbrushes go. I'm curious to try them. Now I'm going to show you something else too here before we finish this. Okay, let's say you remember I wanted a little bit more brown right there. That's fine. Nothing wrong with that. But another thing we can do, this is pretty dry. Yeah. I'm going to take my flat uh, brush here, get it a little damp. I'm going to dip. Let me try to show you here. This is something else you can do. Dip the corner just a tiny bit, see? Not much on there. Work that in your brush a little bit. Maybe even do it a couple of times. And then where your your ribs are, I want it to gently, gently darken that. So, you know, I can do that with a palette knife. Or if I want to make a little bit more emphasis, I'm going to do it with the brush. 
Now you need to do this when it's dry or you'll smear that paint something awful. And I don't think you want to do that. Show you what this looks like here in just a second. It's going to be different. Remember to join me tomorrow. We're going to be painting a, a gnome, a fall gnome. They're always kind of cute. I'm going to paint it on wood. Okay, now look at that. Now what do you think? Just a few little strokes of a darker color. You can really see those ribs on there of the, of the pumpkin. Okay guys, this is your kind of mini lesson on uh, palette knife painting tonight. We have been on here almost an hour, so I believe that's what we're going to call it a night. Uh, and tomorrow night, we're going to do the uh, gnome on wood. It's going to be on the tag board. Let's see here. Uh, so he'll be fun to do, too. So if you have any questions, put them in the comments. I will answer them just as quickly as I see them. Uh, and... Uh, Remember, the painting membership will open September 10th, and it's only $15, guys. It's only $15, and look how much information. This is this is my style. This is how I paint. Uh, I give you different uh, things like the palette knife or brushes, and uh, we paint a variety of uh, things on wood, on canvas, on metal. So uh, think about joining. It, it'll be fun. It'll be a lot of fun, and it's good. Uh, it's a small community. I know there's so many people out there doing this, uh, and there's some people that have been in it for years, and they have huge communities. Nothing wrong with that. You might be a huge uh, community person, you know, or you might want to just be the kind that learns in a smaller group, where you have more of a com smaller community, of course, but that uh, we help each other out, and um, we uh, learn together, right? So it's only $15. Like I said, the first of every month, you will get emailed to you the tracer for the project. You will get the, uh, the picture of the image. You will get also the uh, supply list with whatever brushes you need, whatever paint you need. And, um, and like I said, the tracer also. You will get a calendar that tells what we're going to do that month. But for sure, you will get one tutorial uh, each month and I do pop-ups. I love to do pop-ups and kind of surprise my members and do some different things like that. So you will get that too. I'm just not going to say how many pop-ups because they're pop-ups, right? You gotta be surprised. So anyway, you guys have a good night. Thank you for joining me tonight. Much love to you. Bye-bye.